All right, Digital Warriors, welcome back. We're going to continue on with our Steel Beast uh, tank tutorials. Uh, we're going to jump into Gunnery Mission B. Uh, so we're here with the M1 again. We'll go ahead and open up the mission. And this one's going to be the basics of lasing your target and hopefully killing them because that's what it's all about, right? Putting more heads on foreheads. Putting hot metal down range. So make sure... If you missed the, uh, the prior video, make sure you check that out. That was a very basic video on how to shoot. Uh, this one, we're going to get a little bit more in depth, uh, start using some of the, uh, the targeting systems with the, uh, with the vehicle here. So, the basics of lasing. A lot of information is input into the ballistic computer of Modern Tank to help ensure the first round hits. One of the most important of these inputs is the range or distance to the target. If you know the range to the target, along with the ballistic along with the ballistic properties of the round that you're firing, you can then calculate how much the gun tube must be uh, super elevated above the line of sight to the target to compensate for gravity so that the round hits the target first time go. The laser range finder, and here comes another acronym to you, the LRF, is a standard instrument on modern tanks used to find a target's range. When the gunner lasers a target, a pulse of laser light is sent out from the tank and the return times of the reflected laser pulses are used to calculate the range. On the M1, the range in meters is displayed near the bottom of the GPS in green letters. Upon lasing, the range will be automatically entered into the ballistic computer and the main gun will automatically be raised or lowered to the calculated super, super elevation. In normal mode, the view through the GPS will not change in elevation, though since the GPS maintains the line of sight to the target, the head mirror of the M1A1 is independently stabilized in elevation. After lasing, you might notice the reticle, moves, uh, the reticle moves left or right in normal mode when you move the tur turret in azimuth. So that's horizontally, left or right. This is normal and will be further explained in the tutorial on lead. To stop this behavior and thus dump the lead, simply release the palm switches by pressing joystick button P3 or the P key or your middle mouse button or whatever button that you have it mapped to after you laser a target. Warning, the laser in the M1's laser rangefinder, the LRF, can burn out if you overuse it, so be careful. To be safe, never fire more than four pulses in an 80 second period. Don't hold the laser button down for a long time. If you see a green F next to the range in numbers in the GPS, the gunner's primary sight, and the red reticle disappears, you have burned out the laser <coughs> rangefinder. In this tutorial, you will operate again in normal mode while looking through the gunner's primary sight, the GPS. Recall that to laser target, you press and release joystick button 2 or the control key or the right mouse button. Practice lasing and firing at the six dummy tanks, making sure the target fills most of the center of the circle of the GPS reticle before lasing. Notice the range values displayed in green numbers at the bottom of the GPS. You'll hear the clunk of the gun tube changing elevation whenever a substantially different range is found. Try firing at a target with the incorrect range entered and see what happens. You can also laze the ground or trees or buildings, blah, blah, blah. Let's take a quick at the map. Looks like we're at the same range we were in the last one. Let's go ahead and jump in the gun. All right, so here we are. The default range is zeroed out at 1,200 meters. So let's go ahead and zoom in on somebody pretty far away. Let's look at this guy here. So, if we put the reticle over the target, we hit the right mouse button. Watch what happens to these green numbers down here. It changed from 1,200 to 1,290. Let's go ahead and fire off a round. That's a hit. More than likely, it's a kill. So, let's move off to somebody else. Now, you can see how there's a little bit of lag in the, uh, in the reticle and the gun. That's because we, had, uh, we haven't dumped the lead with the palm switch yet. And that's, you know, pressing P or the three key, or whatever button you have it uh, mapped to. So what I need to do, because this will really screw you up if you forget to do this, is I need to dump that lead. And you can see now the turret is moving just fine. And what it's doing, basically, the computer's trying to keep the gun aimed at the target that you last lazed. So it gets really difficult to aim at another target if you don't, you know, tell the computer that, hey, I want to aim at another target. So let's, uh, let's laze this guy here. He should be pretty close. That should be a kill. Dump the lead. And again, 
always get in the habit. Unless you have a lot of targets relatively close and you know that they're, that they're at the same range. After you lay your first target and fire that round, I always, I always, and again, this is me, I always dump that lead. It'll still keep the range in the computer, but it will just, you know, give you free movement of the turret and the barrel. So let's, let's laze this guy here. Actually, let's laze the ground right below him. And let's see what happens here. So if we leave right there and we get a range of <coughs> 1,850 meters, we fire off a round, it lands in front of him. So let's go ahead and raise it. 1910, this should be a hit. Solid. Dump that lead. And let's go ahead and leave the lead in there at 1910. Let's see what happens to the round here. Surprisingly, that was a hit. That was right over the top of him. I don't know if he's dead, though. All right, let's keep 1910 on this guy and see what happens. Sailed right over the top of him. So let's go ahead. Relays. We're at 930. Rounds loaded. Relays. 1210. Firing. Dump that lead. Let's go ahead and relays this guy. He's at 1600. Fire. That's a kill. That should be everybody on the range. Now, I know these tutorials seem pretty simple at first, but going through these tutorials uh, multiple times to get the feel for the gun, the feel for the turret, um, winning, you know, knowing how to adjust fire and, and, and using the different sights and the different rounds, um, you know, I, I can't stress enough, especially for new Steel Beast players, you know, play these tutorials multiple times. And here's the breakdown of the AAR. I don't think I went over this in the last tutorial. But, it, you know, it, it gives you a breakdown of how you did. Um, some missions have a score. This one doesn't. It tells you how many things you killed, your hit percentage, your average time to kill. Uh, this was pretty long. Um, obviously, you want to, you know, get your uh, your time to kill, your TTK, you know, pretty low. Um, and not take a minute to kill each vehicle. Um, so, yeah. So, okay, guys. That's it for tutorial B. I'll see you again in tutorial C.